for corruption. The two-time Premier was convicted of embezzling money intended for an orphanage. She was on trial with five others, including her son and Bangladesh Nationalist Party Vice Chairman Tariq Rahman. Police have banned street protests. And the opposition says thousands of its supporters have been rounded up. Well, Zia's lawyers have confirmed they will be submitting an appeal against her conviction. We think Khalid Azia is innocent. She has given us the decision to file an appeal. We have applied today. We have applied for the certified copy. If we receive the certified copy today, we will appeal on Sunday, God willing. Well, joining me now in the studio is a, a commentator on Bangladeshi politics, Tala Ahmed. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. So uh, Zia is saying that the charges are politically motivated. They're designed to weaken her and her party. Uh, what impact is her jailing going to have in Bangladesh? Well, first, it's the first time that a head of government in Bangladesh's history has been convicted by a court of corruption well, a charges. Former head of government. Former head of, go uh, uh, former head of government. But um, I think the main impact is going to be Khaldazia is extremely popular, um, as is evidenced at different times that she has contested elections. She is the de facto leader of the opposition, three times former prime minister. And so, and this comes just before, well, shortly after the prime minister announced that there is going to be an election in a few months' time. I mean, end of the year, she hasn't specified exactly when. And so what we also have seen, that following uh, her uh, conviction and sending to pr prison, there's been a widespread violence across the country. In the city, there are reports that in the capital city, there's curfew going on at the moment. So it is going to have significant and huge impact, and never before she was imprisoned in these manners. Uh, the, the elections uh, at the end of the year, she may now not be able to stand in if this conviction against her remains. What will that mean for the Bangladesh National Party, her party? Because they boycotted the last lot of elections in 2014. Well, I think there is now uh, a real risk that the, the main opposition and the alliance that is part of it is probably going to again refrain from participating in that election and that will uh, increase the already um, in a, a questionable legitimacy of the current government uh, it will increase that question manifold but more importantly I think the questions are that it raises a serious question about whether Bangladesh is really capable of coming out of this political infighting and ensure rule of law. You know that Khaldaz is not the first opposition, prime, you know, opposition leader to be convicted. There's been a series of convictions uh, previously of another party, mainly on war crimes and so on. So this just continues the legacy that we have seen of the governing party going up to the opposition and effectively wiping them off. Now, there is another case coming up against her in a in, in couple of months' time. Well, so I was going to ask you this, because she, she has uh, dozens of cases pending against her. So uh, is there a problem with corruption in well, Bangladesh? Well, I think the irony is this. Uh, corruption is rampant in Bangladesh, but she, of all the leading figures, has been relatively less... Uh, well, she's, she's not been directly accused of corruptions before, and even on the case where she's been found guilty, there's no evidence that she knew the funds came. There's no evidence that she had any direct involvement in any of those. Uh, and, and, so, and, and also, more importantly, uh, their claim is, and it seems to be true, that the money which supposedly been uh, used and misappropriated actually are in bank and has grown manifold since uh, the cases were f filed. So, one begs the question that exactly why these charges were filed. And the other important... Well, does it also beg a question about the impartiality of the judicial system? Well, absolutely. I think there's two points to note on that. One is the first charges which were filed by the deputy, assistant director of the Anti-Corruption Commission did not name Khaled Azir. And then he was taken off him and a junior officer investigated. And within a couple of weeks, he filed another charge in which Khaldazi was named as you know, one of the accused. So that begs the question that when you have the effectively the second in command of the anti-corruption commission investigates and does not find anything and then within weeks you have somebody uh, else finding it. it. It just raises many questions. So what does all of this mean for democracy in Bangladesh and for the ordinary voter who has always had uh, basically one or two uh, political dynasties to choose from? Well, I think uh, democracy has been in peril in Bangladesh for some time now. 
Uh, but the, the, the whatever stability we had in Bangladesh, I think now this is seriously going to challenge that stability. Already we have seen uh, police and opposition uh, activists getting into all sorts of violent acts all over the country. And in coming days, I'm afraid, it is only going to get worse. And the other important point here is that unlike many other parties, many other countries, BNP is not necessarily a very strong uh, par organized party. So Kaldazir not being there also means there's going to be a vacuum in leadership, which means that people will do things in, on their own initiative without a central command effectively guiding it. How worried should the region be about possible instability in Well, Bangladesh? I think uh, as a, uh, I'm a British Bangladeshi, I'm extremely concerned. I have families there. My family is planning to go and I'm actively considering whether it would be wise to go. Now, everybody is extremely concerned about the stability of the country and any hope that we're going to get a fair representative government in a fair election now surely would be in serious jeopardy. It's clearly a situation to keep an eye on in the coming uh, weeks and months. Tala, thank you very much indeed for that, Tala Ahmed there. Now in Taiwan, rescue workers are continuing to search for people missing since a magnitude 6.4 earthquake hit the country's eastern coast on Tuesday. At least 10 people have been confirmed killed, more than 260 wounded.